Hi, everybody. Welcome to Climate Change Economics, NREP 722. My name is Dong Gyun Park. Um, today, I'm going to talk about climate change economics for about 30 minutes. This is the introductory course. So may, you may learn a little more detail about uh, climate change in class. But I will introduce very briefly about uh, climate change economics in Korea and Ethiopia. And I will share my uh, PPT file with you. And if you have any questions and ask me and or send me by emails. Now, I hope you can see the, my PPT file. So, uh, Climate Change Economics, NREP 722. My presentation is uh, composed like the five topics, introduction, and macroeconomics of climate change, and climate change policy uh, focused on mitigation, and economics of climate change and Q&A. So first of all, I will introduce global warming and climate change impact. As we already know, the scientific evidence suggests global warming is the use of fossil fuels like coal and, and gasoline that emit carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gas, especially by human activity. Here, you should remember that by human activity, so global warming caused by the human activity. And climate change occurs when changes in Earth's climate system result in new weather patterns. And this one that lasts for at least a few decades, like 30 years or more. And on the business as usual, what may happen to see a change in climate at a very fast rate and on a large scale. For example, rising global temperatures, changes in weather and climate, and the floods, drought, heavy rain, a frequent and severe heat wave, and probability and frequency are to grow with the cumulative emission of greenhouse gases. And remember now the Corona-19 is very serious in around the world. How do they check? They use the only 37.5. The normal temperature is, our normal temperature is 36.5, but when we have only one degree increase, then we feel tired and coughing. So the doctors, nurses recognize, ah, you are in sick. So that means so one degree is very serious to human beings. It's the same things to Earth. So rising global, one degree is big things to our Earth, our planet. And also uncertainty inherent in the economic analysis of environmental issues is magnified by the long-term and global scale. It takes times, not just one, 10 years, but take times, and not just in one single area of reasons, but in the whole world. So regarding pace and a form of future technological innovation and economic growth and threshold for climate impacts. So everything is uncertain. That's, we have faced the problems. So here I brought some of the pictures from the WWF and the IPCCs, and this one shows the the top left is the greenhouse effect. You see the solar radiation powers from the sun, and most of the times 
they came through to the Earth and most of the other solar radiations then return back to the outside of the Earth. But because of the uh, greenhouse gas, like CO2, methane, and others, they stay inside of the atmosphere. This is greenhouse effect and temperature goes up. And then right, left, uh, below right side. So because of these high temperatures and more droughts and wider weather changes and rain and less snowpack, melting glaciers and then shrinking sea ice and increased ocean acidity and warm oceans, rising sea level, you know, we cannot see these things in our, you know, ancestors does not see all these things, but, you know, in maybe 100 years or 150 years last, all these things happen. So here, what is climate change economics? So what we study this semester, the object to use climate science and plus and projected evolution of climate under the impact of greenhouse gas emission to design economic policy to prevent, minimize undesirable events. So keep in mind that this climate change economics and as you may learn or study and macroeconomics or microeconomics in undergrad level, in terms of economic analysis, climate change is an externality. I hope you understand externality or internality. What is externalities? Here externalities are present and competitive equilibrium is not correct optimal. So market failures emerge. That means, and Pareto optimal means, economic states where resources can be reallocated to make one party better off without making at least someone worse off. So in other words, or make simply demand and supply does not match so resources are not used wisely. And then externality means somebody does not pay the cost to clean up. Like plastics or pollutions. If I polluted or if I throw the, the empty bottles or plastics, I have to clean up. But because of the of this the uh, externality, I just throw away and I don't pay the cleanup. Who pay the cleanup? My friend, or my next people, or society. So I push my this cost to somebody else. So there is externality. So who should take care of this cost? Who? So here the problem is everybody doesn't want, want to pay anything. That's the starting point of the, this, the, the pollution eventually coming up to the, the global warming, end up global warming. So climate change represents the greatest and large scale market failure we have ever seen. Nobody want to pay. Last 200 years, nobody does not pay any money to clean up. So it accumulated in the Earth's atmosphere. So global externality, global in its impacts. Greenhouse gas emissions are produced from specific regions, but in its impacts spread worldwide and with different geographical intensities. 
oh, the, remember the Industrial Revolution in England, and then maybe French, Germany, America, United States, and Japan, and then EU, all those countries, developed countries, use these fossil fuels and steam engines, they developed. On the way development, they produce these greenhouse gas and CO2. And then it goes up to the sky, atmosphere, and it spread worldwide. In Africa, in Asia, we don't produce anything, but I affect it. And then in the international meetings, conventions, you know, climate change meetings, all these meetings. Okay, now let's stop producing greenhouse gas or CO2 emission. What does that mean? Don't produce CO2 means do not produce anything or do not do any economic activities or reduce or minimize. Why? That means I have to reduce or minimize using fossil fuels or, or gasoline, things like that, to produce some, um, some goods and services. I wanna develop, I wanna make some money, but on the way, I have to produce CO2 greenhouse gas, but uh, those the developed countries, oh, now we have global warming and climate changes. So, or the other countries, you should stop. Don't do that. Okay. That's happening. That's why from 1992, we started this, the, you know, environmental meetings started until at this point, we are still keep working on and having meetings, sharing the ideas. Reducing emissions is an extremely a global public good. Public, everybody knows public, right? All relations share benefit from reduced emissions, but host countries, someone who reduced greenhouse gas or clean up the, this, the greenhouse gas have to bear the cost of reduction. So what kind of problems? I do not pay the, this, the cleanup, but the next countries, my neighboring countries are clean up. So I just to you know, sit down and wait means resulting free ride incentives. I don't want to do anything. I just enjoy the free lunch, free ride incentives here. So somebody, some countries, oh, they will clean up. Some like host countries will clean up. So everybody, you know, you know, postpone. Oh, you you clean up, you clean up, push. And, and again, this is public good, not private good. If this is my house. Oh, this is my uh, garden. I have to clean up to keep clean my uh, lawn or house, clean up everything. But this is not my house. This is the, everybody's uh, uh, like uh, the playgrounds. So I don't clean up. I don't clean. Somebody will do. So this is the problem of public good. No one cares about this public to keep in good shape or clean it. This is the public's problem. Not many people pay attention to keep clean in the public. And just to want to it, use it, but I do not want to pay public. For example, like the education or defense, or sometimes like the 
road, highway, infra, if you don't pay it like this, those things are public goods. So that was the problem of the climate change. So I said, uh, starting from the uh, developed countries, but they understand now there is uh, some climate change issues, global warming. And if we don't do anything right now, there may be some catastrophic disasters coming. So they should initiate a start now, but uh, uh, they won't bring other friends, other countries together and then ask developing countries, you should do together with us. Okay, I'll give you some money, I'll give you some technology, but you join it and then don't use coal or others, okay? Underlying story. And what about the Pareto efficiency? This, the lines here, uh, the X axis is a service, X axis service, Y X is goods, and you have some resources, and then you produce goods, goods, and services. This is production possibility curves. Whatever you have resources, your resources, you can produce goods and service. This is your production possibility curves in economic terms. So this A, B, C is Pareto efficiency or optimum. So you use all the resources and then there is a, a optimum status, A, B, C, and everybody happy. But if you uh, produce something in D status, this is Pareto inefficient, means you still have some remaining resources. You do not use those, you, what you have resources fully. Okay. So this is what we use always in, in early the uh, microeconomics economics, uh, introductory classes. So climate change, there's some impacts and there must be some responses. So what, what kind of responses? There's some mitigation and adaptations. So now we will learn a, a little bit about what is mitigation, what is adaptation. And then that is a affect the, mitigate the climate change. And then there is impacts. And then there was a response. It's also some circulation like that. So climate change, impact, response, mitigation, and adaptations. So what is mitigation? Mitigation or preventive measures tend to lower or mitigate greenhouse effect. So reducing emission of greenhouse gas. So less emit greenhouse gas from 10 to only five produce. Reducing level of emissions related economic activities or shifting to more energy efficient or renewable energy technologies. From gasoline cars to hydro or battery, you know, change to not produce CO2. or renewable energy to move to, or very efficient production systems, okay, to move to, or enhancing carbon sink, absorb, fix CO2, carbon around the, the, the sky, fix it, or sequester it. How? The forest or soil store carbon and recycle CO2 into oxygen or protecting forest land or forestation or deforestation and using carbon storing 
agricultural technology. Means in the air, there are lots of CO2s there. So in high school, you learned of the photosynthesis. When timber grows, there is a sunlight and water and then nutrition from the soils. And then if you put the seed on the soil, they grow. Nothing. You don't do nothing. They just grow naturally. Sunlight, water, nutrition, they grow. And trees, like a very small scene, but when they grow, they bigger, 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 bigger. What does that mean? The sea coming to stay in stem and then bigger, bigger, bigger. So it means the sea, CO2, sea, carbon is staying here. So it means enhancing carbon sink. So forest or trees are absorbing or fixing or reducing CO2 in the sky here store carbon or recycle CO2 and then uh, respiration and then they uh, absorb CO2 and then produce O2 into the sky again. So protecting forest land means O2 produced and CO2 stay in the, in the trees and the forest. Also carbon storing technologies, some uh, the carbon capture storage system. There are lots of ways, like uh, the like bricks, you know, the concrete bricks, like bricks. You, you capture the, the carbons and make bricks and you put under the ground or put in the, the uh, sea, under the sea. Or sometimes, you know, the seawater sea seed uh, in the, in the Beach, you go to the beach seashore, you see there's some of the seaweed there. They also the using the photosynthesis. So the, the, in the sea, maybe 50% uh, of the oxygen produced from the sea. Also, and then they have lots of CO2 there. Okay, strategies for reducing emissions will reflect countries' different initial positions, mitigation because of the economic status and scientific development stages and policy. For mitigation, here is a carbon tax and tradable permits and subsidies and standards, research and development, technology transfer and other regulatory devices. Okay. Here carbon tax means when you drive the car, you have to pay some more tax because you produce CO2, emit CO2, like that. And the fiscal policy means about the especially carbon tax or emission trading systems with, with allowance auctions. Emission trading uh, schemes means, you know, the uh, buy and sell with the carbon CO2. Like it's like a stock market. Stock market is change the stocks. But here, CO2, you buy and sell stock, CO2, instead of stocks. And adapt, adaptation. Adaptive measures deal with the consequence of the greenhouse effect and minimize their impact. Construction of structures, like uh, installing structures such as uh, uh, dikes, and a river bank or sea walls to protect against the rising sea level and extreme weather events. Or shifting cultivation again, uh, patterns in agriculture or just patterns to adapt to change the weather conditions in different areas with the varieties, items and relocating people away from low-lying coastal areas and creating institutions, some you know, research institutions like that, mobilize the need human material and then and financial resources to respond to climate related disasters. And strategy, 
complement and for mitigation uh, adaptation is not go along but go with mitigation and largely in countries on interest adaptation is the hard measure and soft measure constructions some the river bank or the sea walls and then the, the, the sea waves coming um, protect or changing crop varieties or adapting infrastructures or early warning systems. When droughts is coming, you have early warning systems and heavy rains like that, building code and insurance. And adaptive policy have received much less attention with the funding constraints because adaptation means need money and then so, and, and then uh, my measure is forestry. So forest related mitigation adaptation. Mitigation involves reducing magnitude of the climate change itself, emission reductions. So offsetting the effects of greenhouse gas emission. So planting uh, a forest and newly plant or reforestation. After cutting trees, they again plant or SFM, sustainable forest management or reduce deforestation. So protect the forest. That way you, 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 you catch the CO2 around the air and adaptation. You adjust, uh, involve efforts to limit our vulnerability to climate change impact. So erosion control means when the water flows you know, very rapidly, you put the, some dams, erosion control, check dams. So you stop or slow down the water flow. So uh, you can reduce, again, the damage. So RDD in the forest sector, for example, reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation and enhancing forest carbon stocks in developing countries. RDTD plus. Why forest? I, I showed the example of the RDTD plus because this is the only one and observe or catch, store CO2. The only way uh, around the, the CO2 in, in, the, in the air, the trees, forest is the only one to store, observe fixed scarce CO2. That's why in international society introduced green this mess. And so it started with at the first time the RED, uh, reducing emissions from deforestation, cutting trees and forest degradation means RED and means the, the product productivity is uh, decreasing. And then later RED plus bring the, and plus they put the plus, conservation of forest carbon stock, they protect the forest and sustainable management of forest. Okay, keep uh, forest wisely and then continuously use it. And enhancement of forest carbon stock. Okay, let's plant trees. After cutting trees, let's plant. So can generate large, cheap and quick reduction in global uh, greenhouse gas emissions. That's why every country agree is RDD schemes or systems. So mechanism, how does it work? International community can achieve by paying forest owners or users, give some money, either through national governments or directly to cut fewer trees. If you have the 100 trees, but if you, uh, cut only uh, 10 trees and leave 90 trees on the ground, then I'll give you some money because the uh, CO2 is there and manage their forest better or leave it untouched. Why? The 17% of the, the CO2 emissions around the globally is coming from uh, tropical forests, deforestation. Because nowadays, around the world, people destroy tropical forest. And from there, uh, CO2 emissions takes around 17% of all 
world suit production. So, okay, if you stop destroying tropical forest, means 17% of the CO2 production emission is reduced in one time if we stop. So that's why. So if you, uh, so we have to use the trees. So if you cut fewer trees, instead of 10, you just use uh, only uh, 100, but you just cut 10 and, and, and use efficiently or manage their forest better. You know, the sound management or leave it untouched. Then farmers, companies, forest owners can simply see their forest carbon credits, means carbon credits. Those forests, you have some credit, some amount of the CO2 there. Okay, I will pay. If you don't cut the CO2 there, the, the trees, CO2 is there. So I will pay and I will buy those credits there and reduce uh, forest related outputs. This is so concept of RDD. I mentioned that. So RDD, uh, deforestation, and RDD, de, uh, forest degradation, means the quality or productivity is decreasing. And the other one is RDD plus, means con conservation, protect it or leave it, or sustainable forest management, wisely used forest, and enhancing carbon stock, means newly plant or replant. So uh, the without uh, RDD means uh, business as usual, like uh, doing everything like nowadays based on current activity, and, and then we just cut the destroy the uh, tropical forest means around seventeen point three percent of the CO two keep going out to the air. So without RDD program, but with the RDD program, this amount of the CO2 we cannot produce. We the stay in the forest. This is the RDD concept. And in this way, we can reduce the CO2 greenhouse gas. So and the activities in RDD mechanism, changes in forest area, carbon density, and using this way, we can check. So avoid the deforestation, degradation. And so what kind of advantage? So create a multi-level system of, this is relating to all okay, economics, payment for environment services, PES, means how much you want to pay, what you appreciate those trees, and they will reduce emissions and increase forest carbon stocks. So this is uh, like, if you go to the uh, National Forest Park, you have to pay some admission fee. Means for you uh, to go to the to enter that national forest park means that is what does they mean? Or well, ten dollars or five dollars is worth for you. Means then for the individuals that national park is five dollars worth. So this is what the payment of for environment service. So you add up later, the, how many people to visit the national park and you just add, add up the aggregated then, then the, the value of the that national park is how much. So while payment directed to forest carbon right holders, the owner, forest owner uh, has strong merits to, to keep protected that forest, not to cut or destroy. The challenge for wide application in the short term are formidable since in the short to mid term. So RDD plus will need to embrace a broad set of policies and institutional reforms to improve government, governance, clarify tenure, then tenure, uh, who has the ownership and decentralize appropriately and increase community forest management. Participation is very important. You know, peoples, the, the indigenous peoples participating. So changes in agriculture policy, which could stop demand for new agricultural land and clearing forests. Why the tropical forest in Brazil was, you know, destroyed? Because of they want more uh, beef production and soy production. Where to produce soy and produce the beef, sell 
where some countries in Asia and, and, and who eat Big Mac and hamburger, those countries, and in the largest population has countries, they want more people. So energy policy, which could deduce forest degradation causing by harvesting wood fuel. If you change the wood fuel, like biomass, pellet, and, and charcoal, while increasing reduced impact and logging practice and lessen and harmful effects on timber exploration. Setting up protected areas could also be effective in conserving um, forests. How to make a, so the economics of climate change now? How to make a recommendation to policy? It must be cost effectiveness. We always live in the you know, society, cost effectiveness. So compare cost to benefits. So the, again, the compared to cost, the mitigation and adaptation. And, and damage estimate based on the mitigation and adaptation levels. So uh, here, most accepted uh, uh, estimated value between 1 to 2.5 of country's GDP on average. You don't want to spend more money. Stone, the, you, you, who started this the climate change study, and then 5 to 20% of global GDP can be uh, damaged. But damage is not evenly distributed. Some, on, some countries will incur more because of the, you know, the poor countries suffer more. And but maybe rich countries already prepare for these damages. So they get suffer less. And discounting, what does discounting mean? It's very simple. Interest rate. If you put the money, the bank today, the $1 or $100, maybe one year later, the bank will give you $100 plus $10, $110. $10 means the interest, right? So time preference, the discount interest is time preference. This is theory of interest. Explains the interest rate in terms of people's preference, my preference to spend in the present or time future. I spend my money right now, not tomorrow. So I spend my money tomorrow, that is interest rate, time preference, and they give the interest rate. If I spend the money tomorrow, they give interest rate. So benefit and cost received in the future are often discounted to reflect a preference for current consumption. Why I'm talking about interest discounting? This in a sense give preference to today's generation at the expense of future generations. Myself is important. My next generation, next second generation, I don't care about, I don't know who are they, who they are. So I don't want to spend my money for cleanup or like building or for educations. I don't care about the, the hundred years later or second generation. Right now is important. This is time preference discount. This interest. So if the rate is relatively high, benefits from preventing serious climate change accumulating in the dis distant future to future generation will have a minimal present value now. So interest is 20, 30 percent. So then the uh, 50 years later or 2050 is the, the serious damage you know, discount coming back to right now is very small. Since cost of preventing climate change will occur now, this makes it difficult using cost benefit analysis rules to get acceptance for projects which are designed to prevent the impacts of climate change in the distant future. So in, in 2050, we have to see there's some kind of changes, right? So we have to, you know, uh, do not use the uh, the coal related the um, the, ge the electrical gener generating the coal power or you know we don't use the 
minimizing the uh, plastic plastic the bottles, but all those things. We have to pay more money, but people does not want this. But they, this is uh, explain what the, about the discounting. This is uh, showing the stone and mentioned planet. Earth is essential for the survival and the erase cover. So the, all these things. Oh, sorry. And valuation is how to evaluate uncertainty about future CO2 level and temperature amount of uh, uh, so this is economics of change climate change and this is about interest rate explain this one and stone planet is essential for survival and then and it will cover it cannot uh, return to and so it must be treated differently from other goods okay and the valuation issues uh, and uncertainty and then temperature and CO2 level. So it's that difficult how to evaluate. So, and then present and then future. And then, and, and incorrect market price. So I talking about market price, market failure, and, and, and especially about the non-market value, like value of life. How, how do you, uh, how do you the evaluate your life? All these things and use values. Here you have the use values, non-use values, and use values is related to economic activities incur damages. So direct use and indirect use, and the consumption of natural resources and environmental service, and non-use values, passive values. And here I show that you the uh, resource economics, natural uh, environment economics, you learn that the total economic value is use values, non-use values. Direct values, indirect values, option values, and non-use values, economic existence values, uh, legacy value. Here are some option values for future use. You just wait, or some you uh, the next generation, future generations, okay? Or just uh, the, uh, hypothetical new drugs discovery, like the COVID nineteen, the drugs. The vaccine will be, you know, developed in some time later from a remote environment. This. So, also pricing of goods, I talked about. So finally, what about the, now we learn about the basic things? And then in class, your teacher, your professor will uh, share some more detailed things. And I didn't mention here about the uh, a little about the externality, but social cost of carbon is a key parameter for the design of climate policy. And CC SCC is the marginal cost of impacts caused by emit one extra ton of greenhouse gas at any point in time, inclusive of, of non-market impacts of the environmental and human health and uncertainty and present a brief presentation of deforestation induced policy. And I, I introduced the RDD plus with this the climate change economics. I hope later the teacher will show you ways calculating in taxes, carbon taxes and, uh, and the social cost of carbon. And what's the relation between the, uh, the mitigation and adaptation policy and the most uh, desirable adaptation um, pass in, 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 in the, your country and in the agriculture and others. Okay, this is the end of my lecture. And if you have any other questions, please uh, send me uh, pdk5920 dot uh, gmail.com or you can ask your professors and I hope to see you someday soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.